There is a lot that will be made of your being the first Latina U.S. Poet Laureate. I get the sense that for you that is complicated. I'm very proud of my Mexican heritage. Um, but I also feel like there is a suspicion in me when it comes to firsts of anything, because it makes me think, really? How is that possible? <laughs> it feels like, you know, shouldn't every artist have access to every position and access to every um, way of being in the world? And so I find, I find myself feeling a little bit prickly sometimes with that, because first of all, it makes me feel like that's too long to have waited. <laughs> and secondly, I also, uh, I want to be sure that uh, I honor the position because of that too. You know, I think it's not only a position that honors my ancestors. And I think about my grandfather, Francisco Carlos Limon, who was born in San Juan de los Lagos, who crossed a border and lived in a chicken coop, you know? And if he was alive right now, I, I can't tell you how immensely proud he would be right now. You didn't start in poetry, you started in theater, got your MFA at NYU, yeah. worked at Condé Nast for years in the marketing department. Mm -hmm. Can you take me back to the moment where you say, okay, this is it, I'm gonna double down, and I'm gonna become a writer for real? Yeah, there was a paradigm shift that happened to me in 2010. Um, my stepmother uh, died of cancer at the age of 51. And I think that um, watching someone go at such a young age, it made me think, okay, what would happen to me if I thought I only had this many years left? What would happen to me if that was the age at which I would pass? And I thought, oh, I would wanna make a lot of poems. I would want to make art. I would want to be as free as possible in my creative expression. And um, I think that for those of us who have lost people close to us, I think that they do give you something. And I think she was opening doors for me. I think she was saying, you know, this is your life. Don't, you know, don't miss it. And, um, and it was so interesting because not only did I double down on on being a creative artist and being a poet. But uh, just a few months later, um, I fell in love. <laughs> Part of what that also required was a big move. Yeah. To Kentucky, which then becomes really central to your writing. Yeah, I moved to Kentucky in April of 2011. So it was not, um, you know, just, a, just barely a year after um, uh, I started uh, dating my husband. and. I think about it a lot because I feel like sometimes when we were talking about transitions, driving from here to there, or I think going to a new place can give you this opportunity to readjust your thinking about who you are, right? And it's offered me something that I think most artists need, which is time and space. As someone who has lived in New York, Washington, and was raised in California, what do we get wrong about red states like Kentucky? You know, I think that's a great question. And one of the things that um, I've noticed as I you know, travel throughout the country and tell people that I live in Kentucky, um, the face that people make is fascinating to me. A lot of people are very like, oh, Kentucky. You know, and then I, I, I lean in, have you ever been there? It's really beautiful. It's, you know, this is, it's, it has a really you know, gorgeous landscape. Um, and it has incredible people. I mean, the literary community inside of Lexington, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, um, Kentucky in general, just is amazing. There's good people everywhere. You've said that poetry can make us, as a nation, become whole again. When have you known that to be true? I think there are moments. I don't think they're always long lasting, but I think there are moments. And it's oftentimes in celebration. Sometimes it's in grief. But it's those moments when all of us can put everything down, you know, can just lay everything down for one minute and just see ourselves, each other, and remember, oh, right, okay, I'm a human and, and you're a human animal too. And right, that's what we experience together, you know, one breath in, one breath out. 
And I think it's, it's glimpses, you know? And I really hope that we can have more glimpses.